Alef, bet, bet, gimmel, dal, it, hey, dof, sein, chet, tet, yud, kof, kof, lamed, mem, nun, samech, ein, pei, fit, sadi, kuf, reish, shun, sin, tof, now I think I've said enough. Welcome to another edition of From the Aleph Bet, a program for anyone of any age who wishes to learn how to read and understand Hebrew, especially the Hebrew that's used in the experience of Judaism. I'm Mark Golub. As always, what a pleasure it is to be with you. Thank you for all the emails you sent me, and thank you for such uh, wonderful encouragement. And All of us here want to continue to produce the best possible Hebrew lesson program we possibly can. If you've been with us from the very beginning, first, Mazel Tov. You have learned all the letters of the Hebrew alphabet, and we're going to run through them for you right now. Alex is going to put them up one by one for you as he does. Take a quick look. By now, you should know the name and sound of every one of the Hebrew letters. So let's do it. This, of course, is... The silent Aleph, Mitsuyan, makes no sound at all. Next, this is the letter Bet, Mitsuyan. And remember, as you see it here, there is no Dagesh in it. Without any dots or dashes, this is simply a Bet. But the Bet is one of the three letters that is pronounced differently with or without a Dagesh, the dot inside. And the Bet, of course, has the Dagesh. This is the letter Bet. Take a Dagesh out of the Bet and you get... The vet, it's really a bet that makes a V sound. So you have next to each other the bet and the vet. This, of course, is the galloping gimel. Let's see the cartoon. Mitsuyan, somebody sent me a lovely email telling me they love the galloping gimel. Here is the dalid, the door that swings open. Mitsuyan, the dalid. This, of course, is the letter with a hole in it, and it is the hey. Let's see the animation. Thank you, Alan Ulrich, for the animation that shows the hey loft in the hey. How about this letter, the last letter we taught you? The V, the vav, mitsuyan, the V sound in English, mitsuyan. This letter looks sort of like a vav, but it has this Z-type top. Somebody emailed me that, no, the top of the cyan does not look like a Z to them. It's okay. I emailed back. It's the way I see the Zion. What can I do? But it is the English letter Z. It is the Hebrew Zion. How about this letter? Yes, it is the chet. It makes the clearing of the throat sound. It looks a little bit like a hay, but it has no hole. So it is the chet, and it is designated in English by the letters ch, because there is no ch sound in Hebrew. So we can use the ch for the clearing of the throat, as in chet. Here's a letter that is open at the top, Mitsuyan. This is the only Hebrew letter open at the top. It is the letter Tet, it makes the T sound, Mitsuyan. Here's the small little letter, the Yud, right. And this letter is either a Y sound, Yud, or if the Yud has no vowel of its own, it is part of the preceding vowel and becomes part of the vowel sound itself, just like the Y in English. As the Y in English can either be a consonant, if it comes at the beginning of a syllable, or a vowel, if it comes at the end of a syllable, so too with the yud. The yud can either be a letter, y, or it can be part of the preceding vowel. Here is the cuff, Mitsuyan. We did not put a dagesh in it yet. This is a cuff, and it is one of the three Hebrew letters that does change sound with or without a dagesh. With a dagesh, it is the k sound, cuff. It looks a little bit like a bet, doesn't it? But the bet has the bed. The cuff has the 
look of a backwards C in English, the cuff. If you take a dagesh out of the cuff, it is pronounced the same way that we pronounce the chet, with the clearing of the throat, and therefore we call it a chaf, but it's really a cuff that makes a ch sound when you take the dagesh out. And the cuff and the chaf have a final letter, a letter that is only written at the end of a word. If you grab the horizontal part of the chaf and pull it straight down, thank you for the animation, Alan, again, you get the final chaf. This final chaf is how the letter is written at the end of a word. After the cuff comes the Lamed Mitsuyan with the L at the top of the Lamed. Here we have the Mem. And we have two animations for you. The man climbing the mountain and the mouse that waves hello or goodbye and then runs into the mouse hole at the bottom of the Mem. It is the M in Hebrew, it is the Mem, and the Mem has a final form. This is the final Mem right next to it, and this final Mem is only written this way at the end of a word, never at the beginning or middle of a word. The next letter, this is the Nun, Mitsuyan, and the horizontal bottom of the Nun can also be stretched down to create the final nun, Mitsuyan, the final nun again is only written this way at the end of a word called the nun sofit. And here we have the samech, which has a slice in the right hand bottom part of the samech to distinguish it from the final mem, which you see next to it here. So you have the samech and the final mem. Remember, a final mem will never occur at the beginning or middle of a word, so you never have to even look to see whether it's a samich or a final mem at the beginning or middle of a word. And at the end of a word, if the letter has a slice in it, it is the samich. The next letter, yes, this is the other silent letter in Hebrew. It is the ayin. The ayin makes no sound of its own. How about this letter? This is the letter Pei Mitsuyan. It's the third of the three letters that does change sound with or without a dagesh. If you put the point in the Pei, it makes the P sound. If you take the point, the dagesh, out of the Pei, although it's still a Pei, it makes an F sound, and therefore we call it a Fe. The Pei and the Fe are the same letter but it's pronounced differently depending on whether the pay does or does not have a dagesh in it. And there is a final form of this letter. Again, you pull the horizontal part down and you get the final fe, Mitsuyan. Is there ever a final pay? No. The final fe always ends a syllable. And if a letter ends a syllable, it generally does not have a dagesh in it. And therefore, there would be no such thing as a final Pay, only a final fe. But it's part of the same family, the pay, the fe, the final fe. All part of the pay family. And then we have the tsari mitsuyan that makes the, the tz sound, as in Mr. and Mrs. Cats. Cats, the tz sound. And if you grab the horizontal bottom of the tsari and pull it straight down, you get the final tsari. Again, the final tsari would only come at the end of a word. Here is the only Hebrew letter with a cap. It is the kuf. The other way, the English k is written in Hebrew. The kuf and the kuf. Mitsuyan. And then you have the resh mitsuyan, which is round in the corner as opposed to the dalit, which we put up here next to it. The dalit is square in the upper right-hand corner, but the resh is round, the round resh. And then the very first letter we taught you, the shin, which reminds me of a ship with a dot over the right sail. And if you take the shin and you move the dot from the right-hand sail to the left-hand sail, it is a sin, 
Shin and Sin, Mitsuyan. And the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the letter Tuf, the only letter with a big toe, Mitsuyan. And whether the Tuf has a dagesh or does not have a dagesh, the Tuf is now pronounced T. In Sephardic Hebrew, the Hebrew that is spoken in the state of Israel, which is the Hebrew we're teaching you here on this program from the Aleph Bet, the letter Tuf. And those are all the letters of the Hebrew alphabet, all 22 of them in order. And you know, you hear them at the beginning of every one of our programs. They're sung in order. Let's listen now to the entire Hebrew alphabet. And as you hear them sung, Alex will bring the letters up for you. Aleph, bet, bet, gimel, dalet, hey, bof, sein, chet, tet, yud, kof, kof, lamed, men, yon, samech, ha'in, pei, fit, sadik, kuf, reish, shun, sin, tof, now I think I've said enough. And there you have it, all 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. We've also taught you that in Hebrew, dots and dashes represent the vowel sounds in Hebrew. Dots and dashes are the vowels, and there is always a one-to-one -one relationship between the number of vowels in a word, dots and dashes, and the number of syllables in a word. If a word has two vowels, it has two syllables. Three vowels, three syllables. And of course, one vowel one syllable. Always a one-to-one -one relationship. And by counting the number of dots and dashes there are in a word, you know how many vowels there are in a word, and therefore you know how many syllables there are in a word. Except for one set of dots, and here they are. And these dots are called the schwa. And Alex, what's the rule for the schwa? The schwa is never counted as a vowel. There you go. If you've learned anything on from the Aleph Bet, I hope you've all learned the Shva is never counted as a vowel, and therefore when you count the dots and dashes in a word, never count the Shva. And we've taught you many vowels, but I want to teach you a couple of other vowels, a couple of other wrinkles to Hebrew to round out your knowledge of the Hebrew letters and basically the vowels we've taught you so far. So I want to begin by putting this letter up on the screen. This, of course, is the letter Chet. And I want to put a Patach under the Chet. The Patach, of course, makes an Ah sound. And we normally read Hebrew down and right to left. So normally, this syllable would be pronounced Cha Mitsuyan. This is the syllable cha in Hebrew, with one variation. If this syllable comes at the end of a word, it is not read down, but this syllable is read up. It is read up. Only if the syllable, a chet with a patach, comes at the end of a word. At the end of a word, therefore, this syllable would be pronounced ach is right. Not cha, but ach. At the end of a word, this syllable is pronounced ach. It is read up and not down. By the way, there are only two situations like this in Hebrew. 99% of the time, it applies to this syllable, chet, with a patach. At the end of a word, a chet with a patach is read up. There is also some instances where the letter he has a dagesh in it, very rare, and can have a kamatz under it. And when that happens, it is also read up as in the syllable a, ah, not ha. But having shown you the he with the dagesh in it, Basically, forget it. It's very, very rare. But this syllable, the chet with the patach under it, at the end of a word, is very common. And it is read up 
as in the syllable ach. So I'm going to add a letter and vowel in front of it to create a word. Take a look at this two vowel and therefore two syllable word ending in the syllable ach. Can you read the first syllable? If you said no, you are correct. The nun with a cholam chaser, mitsuyan. The first syllable is no. The second syllable is ach. Put the word together. Noach is correct. Noach. And Noach is a proper name. And if I say that, I'm sure all of you can guess what English name Noach is. You are correct. This is the man who in the Torah built the ark to save life from the flood in the book of Genesis. We call him Noah. But in Hebrew it is Noach. Mitsuyan. So that's a two-syllable word that ends with the syllable ach. Now I want to give you a three-syllable word and you will make me very happy if you can read this word and tell me what it means. You'll make me very happy. Take a look at this three-syllable word. You see three letters and each letter has a vowel of its own. And therefore, there are three vowels and three syllables. What is the first syllable of this word? If you said sa, you are correct. The sin with a kamatz. How about now the second syllable? If you said may, you are correct. The mem with the tseri underneath it. And of course, you know the third syllable is ach. Mitsuyan. Can you put the word together? You'll make me very happy if you can read this word. The word is Sameach is correct. Sameach. Mitsuyan. Sameach. And you know what Sameach means. Alex, what does Sameach mean? Happy. Happy is correct. Mitsuyan, Alex. Mitsuyan, for all of you who knew that Sameach is the word for happy in Hebrew, you can see the smiling face. And here's a phrase you've heard often, a Jewish phrase. The first word is Chag Mitsuyan. Chag is the word for holiday in Hebrew. Chag Sameach, happy holiday. It's one of the ways Jews greet each other on a holiday. You say to another person, Chag Sameach. It's Chanukah, Chag Sameach. Mitsuyan. So there you see this strange little exception in Hebrew where there's one situation that instead of reading down, we read up, a chet with a patach under it. Mitsuyan. I want to show you now a new vowel. Actually, I'm going to show you two new vowels, and I'm going to be honest. When I teach young people, this is one of the areas that seems to give young people difficulty separating these two vowel sounds let's take a look at them here you see the patach and after the patach there is a yud so the question is what vowel sound does a patach followed by a yud make of course the aleph here is silent the vowel sound is I, as in the word, hi, hi there. It's the long I in English. It is the I. A patach and a yud make an I sound. And this is a very important rule for you to remember. The patach and the yud always make an I sound. Always. Doesn't matter whether it comes at the end of a word, in the middle of a word, at the beginning of a word. A patach with a yud always makes an I sound. Here, by the way, is the most well-known of any word with the I vowel in it. A one-syllable word, again with the chet, this word is pronounced chai, mitsuyan. And chai in Hebrew means life, mitsuyan. 
Chai means life. And very often you'll see people wearing a chain with a Chai on the chain. Chai representing life. And you should also know that in Hebrew, every letter has a numerical value based on its sequence in the alphabet. So, for example, the Aleph is number one, the Bet is number two, the Gimel is three, the Dalid is four, the He is five, the Vav is six, the Zion is seven, the Chet is eight, the Tet is nine, and the Yud is ten. And if you put the Chet and the Yud together, you put the 8 and the 10 together, and you get the numerical value of 18. And in the Jewish tradition, 18 becomes a lucky number, a lovely number, because it's made up of the two letters that create the word life. 8 plus 10, Chet plus Yud, makes 18. And very often when Jews give presents, especially presents of money, they will give presents in the multiple of 18. So very often you give $18 or $36 or $54. Sometimes you give 108, sometimes 118. But in any case, the idea here is to give something that has an 18 or a multiple of 18 associated with it. Even $180 is a lovely gift, 10 times high, as a gift at a bar mitzvah instead of $150. You give $180. 18 high, the idea of giving life to someone you love. In any case, when we put high back here up on the screen, you see the patach plus the yud always makes the I sound always makes the I sound. Here's one more word where the patach yud is in the middle of a word. Again, two vowels, so two syllables. The first syllable would be mitsuyan, lie. Lie is correct. The second syllable, la, mitsuyan. Put the word together. Lila, mitsuyan. And lila means night in Hebrew. It is the opposite of Yom. Yom and Lila, day and night. And of course on Passover, the word Lila is very common because we talk about why is this night, this Lila, different from all the other nights. But you see here again, inside a word, patach plus yud is the vowel sound I. And what about the kamats and the yud? We know that the kamats also tends to make an ah sound. What happens if you add the yud to a kamats? And here's where it gets tricky. Because a kamats and a yud is the only vowel that tends to really make two different sounds. Kamats yud makes two different sounds depending on where the kamats yud comes in a word. At the end of a word, a kamatz yud always makes the I sound, just like a patach yud. So take a look at this word. Two vowels, therefore two syllables, because we never count the shva as a vowel. The shva under the lamed is pronounced because it comes at the beginning of a syllable and under the first letter of a word. So the entire first syllable would be Lifa is correct. Lifa. Lifa is the first syllable of this word. How about the second syllable? Nai is correct because the kamats with a yud at the end of a word is the same as a patach plus a yud. It is the vowel sound I. So this word is pronounced lifa nai, and it means before me or in front of me, either one before me, lifanai. But what happens if we add a vav to the end of this word? And now the kamatz yud is not at the end of a word, but is inside the word. And when that happens, the kamatz plus the yud remains an ah. The yud does not change a kamatz inside a word. And therefore, we still have two vowels and therefore two syllables. What would the first syllable be? 
Yes, it stays lifa mitsuyan. But the second syllable is now nav mitsuyan. Nav, as if there were no yud there at all. Nav. And the word as a whole becomes lifa nav. So at the end of a word, kamatz yud is i, as in the word lifa nai. But if the kamatz yud comes inside a word, it remains an a ah sound, lifa nav. One more time, lifa nai, lifa nav. And here's another word that has the difference between the kamatz yud at the end of a word or the kamatz yud inside a word, and it's a word you know. Take a look at this word first. We learned it last week. First syllable is meets Mitsuyan. The shva under the tsari is silent, and therefore you simply extend the syllable by that letter, adding the tsari to the preceding letter and vowel to make one syllable, meets. And if the tsari has a shva, we know that a consonant must follow it, and therefore the second syllable here is Vote, Mitsuyan. That's a vav with a cholam chaser on top of it. Don't think it's an oat. It's not meets oat. Oh no, it's meets vote. And of course, meets vote means commandments, Mitsuyan. Now, what if we put the syllable kamatz yud at the end of the word mitzvot? How would it be pronounced now? There are three vowels in the word, therefore three syllables. The first syllable is meets. The second syllable now is vo, mitsuyan. We wouldn't add the tuf to it because the tuf now has a vowel of its own. So the second syllable is simply vo. And the third syllable, tai, mitsuyan. The tuf has the Kamatz yud, which makes the I sound at the end of a word. Put the word together, you get mitzvotai, mitzuyan. And just so you know, if you add a yud to any noun, it's like adding the possessive pronoun my to that noun. So if mitzvot is commandments, mitzvotai is my commandments, mitsuyan. And this word is pronounced mitzvotai. But what if we add a vav to this word? And now the kamatz yud is not at the end any longer, but it's inside the word. Then it simply makes the vowel sound of the kamatz a. Ah, it does not change to i. So how would we read this word? Again, three vowels, three syllables. First syllable, meets, second syllable, vo again, the vav with the cholam on top of it, and the third syllable, tav, not kaiv, but tav. Whenever a kamatz and a yud come inside a word, the vowel makes the same sound as the kamatz itself, simply ah, and therefore how would you read this entire word? Mitzvotav Mitsuyan. And just so you know, if you add a vav to a noun, any noun, as a suffix, it's like adding the pronoun his. His. And therefore, mitzvotav means his commandments. Mitzvotai my commandments, mitzvotav, his commandments. And if we put one letter in front of mitzvotav, the bet with a pronounced shva, we get the word b'mitzvotav, b'mitzvotav. And the bet as a prefix means with. B'mitzvotav therefore means with his commandments. 
At B'mitzvot Tav is a word you know very well because you've heard it in so many blessings. Asher Kiddushanu B'mitzvot Tav Vitzivanu who made us holy with his commandments and commanded us. And then whatever the blessing then commands us to do follows vitzivanu. B'mitzvotav, a word you now can read and understand with his commandments. And you now understand that a patach plus a yud always makes the I sound, but a kamatz plus a yud makes an I sound at the end of a word only. Otherwise, kamatz yud inside a word remains the vowel ah. We have come to virtually the end of all of the Hebrew nuance to teach you. We have one more vowel and some things to do playing around with the pronounced shva. And that our next lesson, that's what we'll do. We'll complete the very last of the Hebrew vowel sounds for you. We'll talk about the ways in which the pronounced shva can be recognized and how it works inside a word. And then you'll know every letter and vowel and vowel sound and the shva so that you can pronounce any Hebrew word you see. And then we'll work on vocabulary so that you'll know the meaning of words that you see and use in your experience of Judaism. I hope you enjoyed that lesson of From the Aleph Bet. And remember, you can download lesson sheets and worksheets for every lesson of the series free of charge. Just visit the JBS website homepage at jbstv.org and click on the program icon for From the Aleph Bet and then click on the very first option from the Aleph Bet Hebrew Study Sheets. And for anyone who can send JBS a tax-deductible donation of $180 or more, we'll be pleased to send you the entire 20 program series one of From the Aleph Bet on DVD, complete with a CD of lesson sheets and worksheets. JBS, expanding Jewish understanding, celebrating all things Jewish. Be well, my friends. Aleph, Bet, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Bob, Sein, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kav, Chav, Lamed, Men, Yon, Samech, Ha'in, Pei,